الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله The stories of the prophets Allah God says in the Quran We reveal to you the most beautiful of stories in this Quran And in another verse We relate to you their story in truth And in another verse God says So relate the stories so they may reflect welcome to the series on the stories of the prophets this work is a compilation of the stories of the prophets and messengers of god as revealed in the quran the quran together with the trusted commentaries explanations and books of history written by great scholars of islam like ibn kathir and ibn jarir and from the main sources of history also a comparison with the old testament and new testaments many references have been used uh, but mainly also the sayings of the prophet muhammad may peace of allah be upon him um, these stories i have compiled for you and made them into this series i have found that the the story as narrated in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, and even the Quran, needs to be rearranged so that people will follow the series. The Quran did not emphasize the order of the story because the reflection and the meaning and the lessons were more important to the reader of the Quran. But this is a trial from my side to arrange the whole story and also at the same time reflect on the lessons that we learn from them. Allah, God, glory to Him, has chosen to use stories as an important and unique approach. It's a style of delivering the message to mankind through His Prophet, beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon Him. Allah, God the Almighty, has revealed to us many of these stories in um, the stories of many prophets some of the stories are short and some of them take almost an entire long chapter like the surah of Joseph Yusuf some stories are covered in short groups of verses while some are related in long groups of verses some stories like the prophet the story of the prophet Lot, Lot uh, and the prophet Jonah Yunus are repeated in different parts of the Quran, each part explaining a different detail, although the essence of the story remains the same. I have tried to compile it for you and make it in order, compromising the whole story as revealed in the Quran and the Old Testament and the New Testament. The story of Prophet Musa, Moses, peace be upon him, for example, is mentioned in more than 70 places in the Quran, from a single verse to groups of more than 30 verses. These different styles in the way the stories of the prophets are revealed in the Quran are by themselves unique and reflect the richness of the Quran and the purpose of the Quran. The Quran is not a history book, it's not a story book. It's a, it's a book to guide humanity to God and to guide the humanity on how to live correctly according to the laws of God. And thus, because of that emphasis, the stories were not re related and revealed in order, except the story of Joseph. The whole story was revealed in order, in one chapter, to show that God can do that. But he intentionally have divided the other stories all over the Quran. The prophets... These are men chosen and sent by God to guide humanity to Him. He sent prophets to every community, sometimes more than one prophet at the same time, to the same community. He says in the Quran, Verily, we have sent you in truth as a bearer of good news and as a warner. And and there never were, were people without a warner, a messenger, having lived among them. So every community of humans had a messenger or a prophet sent to them. In another verse of the Quran, God says, For we, 
assuredly sent among every people a messenger with the command, serve Allah, save God, and forbid evil. The first prophet sent to earth was Adam, while the last one was Muhammad, peace be upon them all. From various sayings of the prophet, we can conclude that there were more than 124,000 prophets throughout time sent to humanity. 124,000 of them, a huge number, all for the purpose of guiding humanity. Allah, God, does not want to harm us or punish us. He wants us to live in peace in this life and in the hereafter. And that's why he sent us these messengers and prophets. It is the humans who refuse to follow that will be punished. Also in the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, among these 124,000 prophets, there were 300 recognized as messengers of God. The difference between a messenger and a prophet is simple. A prophet is someone who an angel was sent by God to tell him, to tell his people what to do. He was given miracles to show that he's telling the truth and he would guide them to Allah and guide them to the truth. A messenger is a prophet plus a messenger will have a message and that's why he's called a messenger. A message. Usually the message have laws with it. So besides being given the revelation and guidance from God as a prophet, he is given a message. Do this, don't do that. You are allowed to do this. You're forbidden from doing that. It's a law. And sometimes that law is given in the form of a book. And many of the messengers had books. So this is the main difference. Messengers have a message, a law, and sometimes a book. Prophets usually follow the message of the messengers before them. They don't have a new law. They don't have a message. They came to emphasize the message of the previous messengers. Among these messengers, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us, there were 300 of them, only 25 of these messengers were mentioned by name in the Quran. Uh, there are more messengers whose stories are mentioned in the sayings of the Prophet. But uh, the Quran tells us that many messengers have been sent and their names were not given to us. The messengers mentioned in Surah Yasin, Surah number 36 in the Quran, are given, their story is given, but their names were not given. There are prophets and messengers from God whom Allah has chosen not to mention their names or stories related to the Quran. Um, the, the, their names were not mentioned and their stories were not mentioned. Allah has chosen the best of the stories and the best of lessons to be revealed to us. God says, we sent messengers before you. Of them, there are some whose story we have revealed to you and some whose story we have not related to you. This is in Surah Ghafir, number 40 in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, peace be upon him, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory to him, sent us these prophets one after another, starting from the first man to walk on the face of the earth, Adam, right up to the last prophet and messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Whenever any prophet dies, another was sent to replace him. And this continued generation after generation. Sometimes, as I said, prophets were sent for a specific period. Uh, some prophets were sent to a specific tribe or race or a nation. Sometimes two or three prophets were sent amongst the same nation, like Moses and Aaron, Harun, were sent at the same time. Later on, John, Yahya, and Zechariah were sent at the same time. And at the same time, Jesus they were all sent, three of them, sent to the children of Israel at the same time. On some of the occasions, prophets lived around the same time, but were sent to different nations, 
like Prophet Moses and Prophet Shu'aib. They were sent in the same time, but to different nations. Sometimes the succession of prophethood ended with the last prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So why? Why is all of this emphasis on the stories of the prophets? Why does the Quran spend so many verses and uh, I would estimate about quarter of the Quran relates to the stories of the prophets? Many reasons for that. The first one is to teach Muhammad, the last messenger, what happened before him. And to teach him that whatever he, has, he is going through, this rejection of his people, this torture of his companions and so on, is not new. There's nothing new in that. This is the method of all the prophets before him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, wants, wanted to, to make him hold fast to the message and remember that he is following the great people before him. Another reason is a lesson to the followers of the Prophet. The story of the children of Israel and the way they treated their prophets, especially Moses, and their rejection after rejection, their corruption after corruption, is a lesson to Muslims. Don't be like them. Don't follow this road. You will be punished if you do that. So it's a lesson to the people who want to follow the truth. People have done this and went right. People have done that and went wrong. So make sure that you follow the path of the, of the companions of the prophet, prophets before you. And don't be like the corrupt ones. Also, there were many, many lessons showing that God Almighty, Almighty, God is able at any time, at any time, to, to destroy everyone who is refusing the truth. Allah can do that. But Allah has chosen to give them a chance after a chance after a chance. So, Make sure that you do not challenge God because God is almighty. Make sure that don't do the same thing that the people before you have done, the people of Noah, for example, because they were totally destructed with the flood. So th these are some of the lessons. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have been chosen to be the last one. And he has been chosen not to be sent to a specific tribe or a specific time. Allah says in the Quran, we sent you as a mercy for all the worlds. As a mercy for all the worlds. So it is no longer a message to a certain tribe or certain nation or certain time. He was sent with the final message to everyone, no matter what language they come from, where, where do they live, it doesn't matter. And he has sent him in the highest of status. The prophets and messengers of God have different levels and status. Some were more blessed than others and were raised to higher ranks. God says in the Quran, those apostles we endowed with gifts, some above others, to some of them God spoke. Others, see, some of them, to some of them God spoke directly. For most prophets, God did not speak directly. He spoke through angels, through mainly Gabriel, the angel of the revelation. And then the Quran continues saying, others, he, God, raised to degrees of honor to Jesus, to Jesus, the son of Mary, we gave clear signs and clear miracles and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. 
And by the way, this is one of the major mistakes of Christianity, where they mixed, they thought the Holy Spirit was a part of God. The Holy Spirit is very clearly mentioned in the Quran as being the greatest angel, the leader of all angels, the angel of revelation, the angel of destruction of the enemies of God, the angel who gives the books to the messengers, the angel of support to the messengers and prophets of God, Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. He's not God, he's not part of God, he's a creator, a, a creature created by God. The Quran continues by stating that there are levels. But the Quran is very clear that despite these difference in status of the prophets, different blessings that the God has given to messengers, the Muslims are obligated to respect and believe in all of the prophets and messengers without making any distinction between them as messengers or prophets, meaning that they all came with the same message. God is one, worship no one but God, obey the laws of God. This, in this part, there is no distinction. We respect all of them and we follow all of them. But it doesn't mean that they all are all at the same level of greatness. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, we make no distinction between one another among them and to him we submit. It means we don't make any distinction between them in the message, but the clearly they are different status among themselves. It is one of the pillars of faith in Islam that we believe in the messengers of God, especially the 25 that, whose names were mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals these stories of the prophets among other reasons, to state the truthful facts about his prophets. Many of these stories have been distorted. Many of these stories have been changed. The Old Testament and the New Testament have so many different versions. And there, were, there are contradictions. You read a story, you read a number, and you read another story, you read a different number of the same army. How could it be? There are contradictions. So the Quran comes to correct history and correct these contradictions uh, because again these stories have been changed over generations and some of them have been reduced to folklore or superstition these misconceptions and distortions were finally corrected through the revelation of the Quran sent to humankind through the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him um, another reason for this uh, for telling the Prophet Muhammad and telling us the stories of the other prophets before him were to, to show that they were also treated badly. They were considered as liars. So, Muhammad, have a firm heart when you your people mistreat you. Allah says, all that we relate to you of the stories of the apostles, with it we make firm your heart. In them there comes to you the truth. Another major reason for this revelation of these stories is it's a clear lesson and a guidance to the believers of uh, mankind, uh, of uh, humans at large. The, God says in the Quran, there is in their stories instruction for those endued with understanding. It is not a tale invented. It's a, it's a true story, but a confirmation of what went before it. A detailed exposition of all things and a guidance and a mercy to those who believe. So, for these reasons, these stories are mentioned in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God commands us to follow the examples of these prophets who were all guided by Allah, by God. Those were the prophets who received Allah's guidance. Follow the guidance they received. This is in Surah Al-An'am, Surah number 6, verse number 90. So, inshallah, continuing from the next episode, I will start to tell you history of humanity through telling you the history of the prophets. And that's another reason for knowing the history of the prophets. You shall not, you will not understand 
the history of humankind unless you understand the, the history of the prophets. That's the only way. The history of humankind is a struggle between truth and evil through the struggle of the prophets against their enemies. We start, inshallah, next time with the story of Adam. Peace be upon him. Pleasure to have you with us. Please follow us in the next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.